three and four is I, Mr. A, back with story time for another day. Now that the door's closed, squeaky door, gonna get some WD 40 on that. And uh, here we are with the, uh, the amazing story of Adolphus Tips. Friday, March the 3rd, 1944. It's like a miracle. We were just sitting in the kitchen having our tea when we heard a car outside. Uncle George's dog was going mad. Mum said to see who it was. By the time we went out, Uncle George's dog was attacking the tyres, biting and snapping at them. It was a jeep. Aidy was in it, and Harry too. It was the first time I'd ever seen them without their helmets on. They looked even younger somehow. Not men at all like the other soldiers, more like boys. Got something for you, Lily, said Aidy, and his smile seemed like a laugh waiting to happen. Something that's going to make you real happy. I thought it would be some chocolate or something, but it wasn't. Harry reached into the back of the jeep and lifted out a cardboard box. A cardboard box which was mewing. You said black and white, right? Harry said, giving it to me. We found this one hiding away in that old hotel down on the beach. She's blacker than me and whiter than you. Scratches some too. AD took her and held her out to me. This the one you've been looking for? I knew her at once, from her green eyes, from her markings, her white paws, and from the deep roaring purr inside her as I took her into my arms and hugged her to my cheek. I'm not sure how it all happened after that. I knew I was crying a lot, then hugging Aidy and Harry. I know they were about to get back in the jeep when Mum came out, and minutes later we were all sitting round the kitchen table. Aidy, Harry, Grandfather, Uncle George, Mum, Barry and me, with tips sharpening her claws on my lap and we were all having the happiest tea time of our lives. Mum got out the scones and clotted cream she had been saving for Sunday. Aidy and Harry had never had scones before. Barry got some cream on his nose and tried to lick it off with his tongue and he couldn't, so he used the back of his hand and licked it and everyone laughed. And no one talked about the war, not even Uncle George. They stayed until it was dark. I walked with Aidy out to the jeep, tips riding on my shoulder and clinging to me as if she would never let go. Lily, he said quietly, I gotta tell you there was other cats, young ones, a whole family of them down there in that old hotel place. From the looks of her and the looks of them, I reckon they was her family. Maybe too old to need mothering, but you better keep a good eye on her, else she could go right back to them. Do you understand me? She's here now. You keep her here. He stopped by the jeep and stroked tips on the head. I've had the best time, Lily. Best time since I left home. Then I asked him, when you go out in these boats and do those landings, is it dangerous? He didn't answer for a moment. They fire real live stuff over our heads, so I guess it is. They do it so we can get used to it. They know what they're doing, I reckon. It'll be a whole lot hotter when we do it for real over in France, that's for sure. When will you go? I asked him. Sooner the better, Aidy said. It's what we came over here for, Lily, so I just want to get on with it. Get it done and get back home. Then he and Harry were gone. I realised too late that I never even said thank you. Grandfather was sitting with his feet in the oven this evening when he turned to me and said, Lily, I never thought I'd hear myself say it. Those gum-chewing yanks are all right. They're all right. Uncle George's cat hasn't been, since, hasn't been seen since Tips arrived. Tips is queen here now. She's taken over the whole house and my bed. She's lying spread out on my feet right now, flexing her claws and looking at me as if I'm writing. She never takes her eyes off me. And Aidy was right. She has had more kittens. It was some time ago, but I can still tell. I just hope her kittens are old enough to do without her. I can't let her go back to them. I just can't. It's so good to have her back. I feel like I'm purring inside, purring with happiness. I've been thinking, next time I see Aidy, I'm going to ask him to bring her kittens home as well. Then Tips will be really happy like me, and she won't ever want to go running off to find them, will she? Tuesday, March 7th, 1944. Tips has gone off again. It was Barry's fault. He left the back door ajar when he went to fetch the logs. I told him, I told everyone she might make a run for it, that we had to be sure to keep her in. Tips must have slipped out behind his back and we haven't been able to find her since. Barry says he was only gone for a few moments. I try not to blame him, but in my heart I do. He should have been more careful. I'm more cross than upset. At least I know where she must have gone. Back to her kittens, back to the hotel. At least I know she's alive. As soon as I can 
can, I'll tell Aidy, and he can go and fetch her back again, and the kittens too this time. He'll do it for me, I know he will. Today was such a beautiful day too, clear skies and a blue, blue sea. There are primroses all under the hedges and celandine too. Why do sad things have to happen on beautiful days? And Barry's miserable too because he thinks I'm angry with him. I'm not really, not much anyway. I'll make it up to him tomorrow. We heard lots more big explosions today. One huge one that shook the whole house. I hope Aidy and Harry are all right. Wednesday, March 8th, 1944. Someone said it first on the school bus this morning. I couldn't believe it. I didn't want to believe it. But Mrs. Bloomfield told us it was true. The Slapton Beach Hotel was blown up yesterday. Blown to pieces during a landing exercise. She says there's nothing left but rubble. Barry picked some primroses for me on the way home this afternoon because he thought they'd make me feel better. They don't. This time I know I won't see tips again. There's no point in even hoping, not anymore. She had her nine lives, I suppose. But her kittens didn't, did they? I can't even cry, I'm too sad. Uncle George's cat came in a few minutes ago. Maybe he knows what's happened and he's trying to be kind. I've put him out now. I don't want any other cat, not ever. Wednesday, March 15th, 1944. Mum said this morning that she had a big surprise for me. I thought she was just trying to cheer me up first. First she said Barry and I could stay away from school today, so we knew something was up. Then she cooked a special Sunday lunch, even though it wasn't Sunday, with roast chicken and apple crumble. The table was laid with all the best china and her best tablecloth, and she'd done her hair and put on powder and lipstick. Even Uncle George looked less like an old scarecrow than usual. He'd slicked down his hair and put a tie on. Grandfather wasn't there and no one would tell me where he was. Mum just tapped her nose at me and smiled mysteriously. Barry said he knew what it was all about but he wasn't going to tell me, so I pretended I didn't care anyway, which upset him a bit, which I shouldn't have. He was only trying to keep the surprise. And when the surprise came, it was supreme. Just supreme. What do you reckon the surprise is? Uh, I'm going to say her dad's home. When? Oh, well, I guess we'll have to wait and find out what the surprise is till tomorrow. Okay, in the meantime, take care everybody. Have a great day. Bye-bye.